Today I wanted to share with you the things that I used last year that led to the most peaceful and enjoyable Christmas season that I have ever had as a homeschooler. Seriously, I got this stuff from the attic just to show you all. So I'm just pulling it out of this massive bin of all of our Christmas stuff from last year. The wonder of the greatest gift. Do you see this book? I'll open it for you. Whoa. I can't remember where I saw this, but it sold on Amazon. And when I saw how pretty it was, I was like, yes, yes, because I'm an Advent queen. Anything that has Advent, I'm like, yes, I will do. This book is so pretty, you guys. When I got this in the mail, I was like, oh my gosh, I love it. Ready? Ready? Here it goes. Wow. <laughs> it makes me so happy. All right, so if I open it, if I turn it to the side here, you can see. So you've got your tree here, and then you've got the advent. And each one has a little door that you open up, and then it's got a little ornament. Can you see that? That you can hang on your tree. Okay, let's put all the ornaments on. And then number 25. It's a star. Ta -da. Actually, I think it's supposed to go like this. There we go. So this Jesse tree also comes with an actual book that is in a flap. Urgh, can I get it out? The Wonder of the Greatest Gift, an interactive family celebration of the Advent. So it actually has a book that comes with it. And I think you can actually get the hard copy of this, like a separate book altogether and not use this one. And I think the bigger one actually goes into more detail and has kind of a larger, more stuff to say. It's pretty thick and it's got quite a bit of stuff in here. This is beautiful. This, 100%. This, on the other hand, ah. From a homeschooler's perspective, where we like our sticklers about grammar, <laughs> and some of it was just so cheesy. It's just so cheesy. I don't even wanna read it. This is a story about a family that was as big like a tree, with branches that reached to the sky. But this family got into trouble. You'll be surprised. This family didn't always love God. You'll see. And when that ha it, it, it kind of reads like a poorly played out preschool TV show. That's, that's kind of my feeling. Which is why I got this book instead. Which is too bad because this is so pretty. And the quality is clearly there. I mean, we used this heavily last year. And it is not beaten up. It's really well done. And I just, I'm, I'm really impressed with how well it withstood all of the touching hands that attacked it during the year. And I mean, you have to be careful with it. I mean, these, these little flaps are gonna rip off if you're not careful with it. Uh, but it is sturdy. It's not like cheaply made at all. Okay, now I have to put all this stuff back. I was gonna say, now I have to remember how to, where to put it all back. It's got a little cheat number in the corner. So that's fine, that's great. So last year was my first year of doing the Jesse tree or even having heard of the Jesse tree. I must have lived under a rock before this because now I'm like, ooh, Jesse trees. And so when I heard about it, I was like, I have to have one. I have to have one. And this was a great first devotional for me as a person who has never done a Jesse tree before. So if Jesse tree is a new term for you, basically what it is doing is tracing Christ's genealogy through the ages and up through till he, his birth, until Joseph and Mary. Revisiting the story of Adam and Eve and looking at it through a lens of Christ being born is beautiful. So much beautiful symbolism in there. And I really loved this book's take on it. I will say that this is very grown up. This is not meant for young children. My kids were, my, my littles were squirmy when I was reading this, but it had so many great scripture references in there. It really dived deep into the symbolism behind all these great stories. 
I personally really enjoyed it. Because it's from a Catholic perspective, I don't personally use the catechisms. I don't use quite a few of the little things that are in here, but that does not negate the beautiful truths that are in here. And it was absolutely an excellent resource when I was doing our Jesse tree. Rooted in childhood. This was a Santa Lucia Day unit study that we did. This came in a mega bundle last year that I purchased. Every time I buy those mega bundles, I'm always like, oh, is it gonna be worth it? <laughs> and am I gonna be able to do all the things that are in it? And no, the answer is no. You're not, you're not gonna be able to do all of the things in the mega bundle. Oh, the Santa Lucia unit study was so enjoyable to do. She has a recommendation of books to read. And they're all phenomenal books. Some of them I'm actually gonna purchase for this upcoming year. There are songs, because you gotta have songs. It's Christmas season, you gotta have songs. So there are a couple of stories, I'm just floating through it. And then she's got a couple of handicrafts that you can do, and this supply list. So you can do the felt candle crayon, crayon, the felt candle crown, star boy hat and wand, woven hearts, gingerbread play-doh, paper star garland, ooh, loose buns, and pep, par, pep, par, kakor. <laughs> oh, Is this Danish? Or Swedish, I can't even remember. Santa Lucia is a festival of light celebrated in Sweden, Norway, Norway, and the Swedish speaking areas of Finland. She also has these pattern pieces to make a crown that you can use in your procession. She also has the pattern pieces for the boy hat. And what I love about her little handicrafts is that she also has a little blurb as to why you would do them for Santa Lucia Day. It just makes it so it's not just like, and here's another Christmas crafts. It actually gives it meaning. This was a very low pressure unit study. She has another one that I'm thinking about purchasing because I, we enjoyed this so much and I was so excited to see it again. I was like, what other things does she have in her shop? Definitely check the link down below to see what else she's got in there because they are all phenomenal. Oh my gosh, guys, I love this. This is called the Giving Manger. So you guys all have heard of Elf on the Shelf and you put your little elf and he's like watching you. And I have always felt like, I don't like this idea of this like strange little doll creature that is watching us. <laughs> like, I don't ha know how people are comfortable with this. It's cute. If that's your tradition, then good on you to have that tradition. But this was an excellent replacement for people who are like me feeling a little odd about a little elf doll following you around. <laughs> All right, so the giving manger. I love the box that it comes in. It's very sturdy. I say that and all the things fall out. So what you do is you set up your manger. All right, so it goes like this with like the little X's on the bottom. Come on. There we go. And then you have your baby Jesus that goes in the manger. And what you're doing is you, every time somebody does a good deed for somebody else, they take a piece of straw and Jesus doesn't go right in right away, right? You have to wait till Christmas. They do a piece of straw into the manger. So you helped your sister do the dishes. You grab a piece of straw and you put it in the manger. And by the end of Christmas, you know, by the time Christmas rolls around, your manger should be full of good kind deeds that your kids do for each other for baby Jesus. And that is the Christmas gift that we all wanna give. And I love it because there's like a no pressure, nobody's gonna see you put the straw, it's not like a big kind of event, but it also makes kids look for good deeds that they can do so they can participate. Literally guys, we were done with our whole little stack of straw in the first day. In the first day, and I had so many kind things happen to me that day. It also comes with this book in the back called The Giving Manger. This I felt was a little sentimental for my taste. It was just a little much, but my kids really enjoyed it. And I feel like it tied nicely with the actual activity of thinking of others and being kind to one another and really what the Christmas season is about. I wonder where you can get more straw. I like vacuumed up a ton of these little straw pieces last year. Ooh, dog hair.
That's what happens when you have an Australian Shepherd. You're just going to get dog hair everywhere. And you know what? This would make a phenomenal Christmas gift. If there is a family in your neighborhood new to Christ, newly saved, or if you have a new family in your congregation or whatever, this is such a great gift and it's also just something great to have in your house during the Christmas season. The Jolly Christmas Postman. Oh, this makes my heart so happy. <laughs> Megan over at Pennies and Salt did a video about Christmas uh, books that they really love and enjoy. And this was one of the recommendations that she did. It's such a nice and sturdy cover. And then you look inside. The paper is really thick. It kind of reminds me of like an Usborne book. But inside, it's got all of these cute little activities from Baby Bear and Brother Globe Locks. Brother Goldilocks. I didn't read that right. Baby bear and brother from Goldilocks and sister. Nah, okay, there we go. Here's another one. This is another letter. Mr. Wolf and Red Riding Hood. And then it's a game. Isn't that cute? And it says, beware, get out of the woods. And it has rules. And then you can play the game. This is the cutest thing ever. Oh, this one had the puzzles. Hold on a minute. When I got this book, when I got the book out, it, the little puzzle pieces all fell out. It says Humpty Dumpty's Jigsaw Puzzle. Dear Humpty, get well soon from all the king's men and the horses. Happy Christmas. And then you can put the puzzle together, you guys. All right, I'm going to put the puzzle together so I don't lose all the pieces. Ah, get in there. No, why aren't you going in? <laughs> got it. Isn't that so fun? I'm sorry, I just think that's adorable. This is so much fun. For our old pal, the postman. Oh, that's right, I remember this one. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a, uh, an accordion, but you open it up and you can kind of see, do you see the little window in the center of it? And then you can see um, just all the little postman people. I don't know if I could like, there we go. It makes my heart happy because what's more Christmassy than sending cards? I love it. Okay, so this box, half of it is filled with Christmas books. Let's be honest here. All right, Humphrey's First Christmas. This was recommended and I purchased last year and it is so cute. I think I love it the most because it's about a camel. And I mean, who can you resist that face? Can you resist that face? I can't. This is a really darling story about a camel who is traveling with the wise man to go and see Jesus. And he gets into like various shenanigans and it's a really cute and funny story that my children really enjoyed this past year. I'm excited to get it out again. <gasps> Lemony Snicket! My kids are huge fans of Lemony Snicket and the series of unfortunate events, the books. We actually haven't ever watched the movies. But he did The Latke Who Couldn't Stop Screaming, A Christmas Carol. You guys, oh my gosh. This is the most hilarious Christmas book. I love it because it takes the seriousness of Christmas and just kind of pokes fun at it and just makes it lighthearted. And it also has a twist to it. It's very, very clever and so funny and just hits that funny bone right, right in the spot that I like. I love this book. And I love the, the hardcover. It feels really good. And the pages are nice and thick. 25 Days of the Christmas Story, an Advent family experience. I love Advents and I feel like every year I'm like signing up for all of the Advents. And truth be told, I bought several Advents, but this is the child's version one that I kept. I think what's so precious about this book is that it has little activity times and family time questions. So it's not just a book or a devotional that you read. And it's written in such a way that children can know and understand and enjoy the pictures. And I think that's part of the reason why my littles enjoyed this one in particular so much. Oh my gosh, I forgot this, that it has a character trait as well. Character trait, honoring. <laughs> it's so fun. I love it. Character trait, Simeon, listening. Why was Simeon listening? Wouldn't it be like Zacharias should have been listening? You know, he should have been listening. He didn't listen. So I think my one complaint with this book is that it doesn't just have people in here. It also has like a couple of like random items. Gold, frankincense, myrrh, Egypt, and Nazareth for day 25, which I feel was kind of odd. Like you would want Jesus to be 
the last one. But for whatever reason, they decided to do Jesus on day 13. If you wanted to change it up and like put the people where you wanted them to be, you could absolutely do that. You could do Jesus on the 25th or the 24th. You can put him wherever the heck you want. The Christmas Miracle of Jonathan Toomey. This was a new book that I purchased last year. It is a very sweet, darling story about a man who has lost his wife and child, and then a neighbor comes and sort of adopts him and includes him in their Christmas celebration. It's a Christmas classic. It pulls at your heartstrings and makes you just feel all the good things, all the good things. Oh, the Nutcracker. Oh my gosh, this book is beautiful and I love how it is illustrated. There's so many Nutcracker stories out there that you're like, well, oh, this is just another one. I feel like this is just illustrated in such a way that is, is classical Christmas. We go and see the Nutcracker every year and I feel like this book captures that kind of excitement and buildup that the ballet has. It's just, it's so beautiful and I love the illustrations for it. Okay, so we are a puzzle family. We love our puzzles. And last year we got the 2000 Disney puzzle because we're crazy. This one was exceptionally big. Can you see that? Can you see that? But I love having a puzzle just out. It just gives you something to do and just relax and enjoy with like a cup of wassail. Like that's just a happy place for me. Ah, look at this, look at this puzzle. I'm having flashbacks, puzzle flashbacks. Oh look, I love this. I love when the pieces are already kind of semi put together. Bonus freebie, my favorite thing. Oh, I think I fell down and hit my head really hard when I bought this puzzle because it's like 2,000 pieces and my kids were looking at them being like, oh yeah, mommy, we love these Disney puzzles. My kids really love doing Disney puzzles that have uh, real defined faces so they can hunt for their favorite characters and put them all together. And then me and my husband and my bigger kids kind of put together the castle or whatever that's around them. But all of the characters were rather big and so none of their features were clearly defined. It just meant that we were doing this puzzle until February. <laughs> Would I do this puzzle again? Yes. Would I do it again next year? It's just a little too hard for my smaller, younger family. But my husband and I really enjoyed it. Christmas Day in the Morning by Pearl S. Buck. So this is a new one to me that was recommended by Rachel over at Seven and All. And Pearl S. Buck is like one of my favorite writers. I love everything that she has written. Um, but I didn't realize that she had written a children's picture book. M the majority of her work is about Asia and China. And so to see her do something that is like outside of her norm, I was really intrigued by. It's a beautiful story, very heartwarming. And my kids really enjoyed it. And I think it captures the message of Christmas so well. Excellent, worth picking up. All right, gather round homeschool. <laughs> the first Christmas. So I am late to the gather round train. I just didn't need to, so I didn't do. When I got it initially, I was so excited by all of the music that was incorporated, all the crafts, the storyline. I felt like the way it was laid out was so smart and well done. However, <laughs> did we actually do it? <laughs> no, we didn't. We didn't. We, we, we didn't do it. Honestly, if I had to choose and go back again, I probably wouldn't have purchased it. It did add to the buildup and excitement of doing Christmas and doing a special Christmas unit. And I think for the money, I got what it was worth. <sighs> I just didn't use it enough. <laughs> It was one of those purchases where I was like, please, this would be so much fun. And everybody was like, yeah, but we've got other things that are fun to do too. <laughs> I'm not going to do a full flip through of this because I think there's quite a few flip throughs of this particular book. But it has a book list. It has a supply list. It has a calendar where you can organize all of your stuff. I think the big thing, though, that was a real pull for me was that it focused on one or two people in the Bible for the Christmas story and really went in depth with it and kind of focused and planned their activities around it, which is really appealing in a smart way to, to lay out a Christmas unit study. It was just too much. It was just too much. I can't be the only one that has like a million and one games on their Amazon cart <laughs> that I want to purchase. And when we got this one last year, it was an instant hit. 
I love this game. So we do games every Christmas season where I wrap all of our games that we really love and enjoy, and then we open one each day and play together as a family. And Splendor was one of our favorites that we purchased last year. The box is nice and sturdy. It's really, really I say that every time and then something like just like flies out of it. Okay, so when you play Splendor, you have all these cards that have numbers on them. There we go. And then you are adding the numbers up. And as soon as you get to 15, you win the game. And so this is a great activity for those who are trying to practice their addition facts because they are adding numbers between two and five working up towards number 15. So it is easy enough that my five-year-old, six-year-old can do it, um, but it is an interesting game that my 12-year-old still likes to play it. We get this game out all the time. We still do, we still play it. Oh, okay, and the last thing I have is this box that has our Fisher Price Nativity in it. My gosh, this is so dirty from being in the attic. I kind of have to hide this quick because my kids are going to see it and they're going to like, it's the nativity and they're all going to come screaming down here and they're going to carry all the pieces off. And by the way, you need to like pick a room if you do get this. This is the room it lives in. Do not take it out. Otherwise, you're going to be finding nativity pieces like everywhere for the rest of your life. So I got these Fisher Price Nativity Little People for a really good price. I'd say about five years ago. I feel like they go on sale around Thanksgiving. Like you'll see promos for it. And this is one of my kids' favorite things for us to get out. Oh, look at it. And yes, I do keep all of the little plastic bags <laughs> that hold all the little things in them because I'm a psychopath. Because, because I'm a psychopath. And a sheepy, sheepy. Got a goat and a cow. Got baby Jesus, little baby Jesus. Here, let's put baby Jesus in. Turn off. Oh, it doesn't turn off. And you got the donkey. You put the little card on. Put the little card on. There you go. And you put Mary on there. You pose the little card. Oh my gosh, I have so much fun with this. <laughs> I only have two wise men. I know I have a third wise man upstairs. In fact, I wonder if I can go convince my kids to go find it. Oh my gosh, I forgot it did that. What the heck is this? This is in like all of the nativities, the little Fisher Price nativities. It's like it's supposed to be a sack. I hope you guys have a fantastic Christmas and let me know down in the comments if you have used any of this stuff or if you have some recommendations for me because as always, I am looking for more. Yep, I am always looking for more. <laughs>